Hey everyone, even with all the examples that has happened all around the world and particularly just in our southern neighbor, like we get all the news and information that comes out of the U.S. So for Canadians, yeah, you can't pretend or claim ignorance at this point. But I'm seeing the exact same patterns. And, and yeah, do you not realize? That's the thing. If you're Canadian, learn some of the things about America and you'll find out that yes, they're usually a few years ahead of us especially in regards to economic activity and economic principles and fundamentals and shown with real evidence how dangerous it is to rely on central planning, collectivism, or those false pretenses of heightened animal spirits to prop up a truly failing and faltering economy. Every effort or attempt to undermine market fundamentals has always shown that in the long run yeah the market's going to show you time and time again that it will correct it will revert back it will come to represent reality you know like i've said in past videos you don't get to ride a unicorn off into the sunset to your golden paradise that's that's not reality folks that's propaganda that's wishful thinking as with what happened in the u.s when you know the housing market started to show some cracks and fissions, the central planners, the crony corporatists, the bankers, they desperately tried to keep and maintain that speculative bubble. They didn't want it to get popped, but all they really did is inflated it with more air, and ultimately the pop was that much bigger. And it's happening in Canada, like I say, deja vu. CBC News Business New mortgage stress test rules have borrowers flocking to alternative lenders. So yeah, not your AAA, your top rated mortgage lenders, even though <laughs> even that's a false pretense because they were all bailed out to the tune of $114 billion, all these banks. So yeah, they're not good fiscal or economic stewards by any stretch of the imagination or lenders, right? But Canadians are basically following suit to what happened in the U.S. when you know they tried to crack down. That's the thing when you when you start. Hey, when you open up Pandora's box, trying to close that lid has a lot of unintended consequences, right? And in Canada, we're seeing this because now, like I say, people are well now the banks because of all this crap, they're starting to stress test lenders and people that are seeking to have a mortgage or buy new homes or by existing homes, they're stress testing them to the standards of roughly around 2% higher than existing interest rates. So if you know a five-year fixed mortgage in Canada today is, I think it's around 5.15%, the bank's gonna test you, stress test you, to make sure that you'd be able to make your mortgage payments at 7.15%. And we're seeing that, oh shit, a lot of Canadians wouldn't be able to do it. And that's just a 2% increase, folks. Pretty minor when you think about it in the grand scheme of things. And what's happening is like, oh, no, we wouldn't be able to do that. So they'll go to these alternative lenders. But do you really think that you're going to be better off with alternative lenders? No, they'll give you, they'll, they'll write the contract up where, oh, it'll sound good on paper. It sounds like, oh, you'll be able to handle it this way, right? We'll, we'll, we'll stretch that pain out way off into the future and, you know, things will get better. And don't worry, it'll, it'll be fine. You'll be okay. <laughs> yeah. So junk grade or very risky lending, right? It's not good, Ken. It's not good. When you're, <laughs> when even at these ridiculously historical levels of interest rates, like I say, which have never existed in all of my lifetime, and even many decades prior to me even being born, if you can't <laughs> handle those debt levels or that debt load, and you're seeking alternative lenders and they're finding some way to tweak that so that you can at least get into the market or get dip your foot into the market. <laughs> Do you not realize that that's, like I say, you, you, you can't avoid reality because it's, it's just, reality has to exist, folks. <laughs> we're, not, we don't, we're not truly in the matrix. Reality actually does exist and you actually have to function in the real world. Sorry, hate to break it to you. Mortgage brokers say the borrower rejection rate from large banks and traditional monoline mortgage lenders has gone up as much as 20% after Canada's banking regulator imposed a new stress test for home buyers who don't need mortgage insurance. 
As a result, alternative lenders are seeing an uptick in business as brokers increasingly direct home buyers towards borrowing options that are beyond the reach of the Office of the Superintendent of Financial Institutions, newly enacted tighter lending regulations. Clients who don't meet the bar are turning to private lenders, mortgage investment corporations, MICs, and credit unions, which are provincially regulated and not required to implement the stress test, said Carmen Campignaro, president of ProFunds Mortgages in Burlington, Ontario. Campignaro is one of the brokers who said rejected loan applications to traditional lenders have risen by 20% since January 1st when SFI mandated a new stress test for uninsured borrowers or those who have more than a 20% down payment. Private lender Fisgard Asset Management Corporation in Victoria is seeing an influx of borrowers and better quality business, said Hal Noble, its senior vice president of residential mortgage investment and broker relations. A lot of these people should be bankable, said Noble, but they're not. I'll post a link to this article in the description of the video below. But I mean, come on, folks, listen. Just trying to help you out here a little bit. You know, just be reasonable. I mean, some people may very be able to do this stuff, right? And may be able to avoid that stress test. Although, why would you want to try to avoid a stress test? You know, that's just be able, that's just prudent as far as I'm concerned. It's one of the few things I think is kind of wise. It's like, we know interest rates are going to go up eventually. That's that's just a reality. So, the fact that the banks, and not that I'm defending the banks, because like I say, these are very corrupt and vile people that run these institutions. But... As a borrower, it is very prudent. It's very principled for you to at least make sure that you'll be able to maintain your mortgage payments on that home that you indebted yourself to the tune of, you know, hundreds of thousands, half a million, maybe three quarters, maybe a million dollars. You might want to make sure that you'll be able to keep it, right? That all those payments you dish out or dole out won't be wasted and you'll end up losing your home as a consequence of not being able to maintain them. Damn Canada, you know, this exuberance in the housing market and even Polez has admitted, and I've shown it in past videos, like, yeah, it's the central bank that stimulated all this speculation and massive amounts of borrowing, lending, and increased debt loads. Yeah, it, like I said, they, they put forth that to bait, and I get it. A lot of Canadians, they, they bid it. But, you know, if you're wise, if you're prudent, you know, you're on the hook now, but... There are means or methods to try to at least wiggle your way or at least get off it so it doesn't you know, rip your jaw out of your head. And those of you that haven't jumped into the fray yet, this is, like I say, this is, this is big warning signs, big flashing warning signs saying, be careful out there. If you don't want to listen, well, hey, like I say, that's the onus is on you. That's your decision. But in the end... You, your family, and those you care about are going to have to suffer the consequences if you're wrong in your assessment and what you can handle and what the future will entail. Oh, and before I tie this video up, I want to also point out another CBC article out of the business section. Headline, average price for detached homes in downtown Toronto fell 4% in past year. Detached House prices fell, but condos went up by 15%. But as we know by statistical data and numbers, that it's the detached homes that represent the majority of the housing market in all of these overinflated and overvalued markets. So to see them coming down, and this is basically just barely into 2018, where they're starting to do a little bit of tweak and trying to quell some of this over ambitious exuberance regarding regarding the housing market that some people think that's just going to continue on indefinitely being inflated and your your house is now just a pot of gold and you'll be able to cash out at some point and just live off the speculative increased wealth in your home that like I say what what made it worth anymore right <laughs> only under the current low interest rate environments are you seeing that happen but once again it's that that's going to flip that's flipping and you're seeing the consequence the result of that and some people are starting to recognize and realize that reality 
The closely watched Toronto housing market showed signs of a slowdown last month as the price of benchmark detached homes fell by almost 4% in the past year, although condos appreciated by more than three times that amount. The Toronto Real Estate Board said Tuesday the average selling price of a detached home in the 416 area code was $1,283,981 in January, a decline of 3.9% from the same month a year earlier. Now I'll post a link to this article in the description of the video below. And, and if I can find it, I'll post it as well. But there was another headline article that I read earlier in the week about homes in Whitby that some of the people, before the ground was broken, like when you're trying to sell in these new developments, these new subdivisions. But people that originally bought the house at whatever that valuation was, I'm not 100% on that, people going to buy that exact same house now can get into it at $90,000 less than the people that jumped into it initially. So... Like I said, we're starting to see the cracks, the fissions. They're, they're showing, folks. So be wise, be prudent, be careful out there. It's, the onus is on you. you know, you're the one that's going to be on the hook for the next 25, 30, or up to 40 years. Although I suppose there's only some lenders that will give you a, a four-decade mortgage at this point. But you really you should be wise. You don't put yourself in a position economically or financially where you'll not just lose your home, but the shirt off your back along with it. Skinny Libertarian, and I love liberty.